She served in the CIA since 1985 under six U.S. presidents from both parties, but that did not stop Senate Democrats yesterday from trying to smear Gina Haspel. The CIA selectively declassified only small pieces of information to bolster your nomination while keeping damaging information under wraps. Why actually destroy the videotapes? Doesn't that feel like a cover-up? What I believe sitting here today is that I support the higher moral standard we have decided to hold ourselves to. Can you please to. answer the question? Senator, I, I think I've answered the question. No, you've not. Uh, yes, she did. Uh, Sergeant Nick Irving was known as one of America's deadliest snipers, taking out the Taliban in many cases and more, and says we need her in charge and joins us now to react. Uh, welcome, Sergeant. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning. Thank and you. congratulations on your book. It's called uh, Reaper, Reaper Ghost, Ghost Target, Target, which you wrote with General Tata. No, yeah. it's exciting. This is the week it comes out. But just on what happened yesterday, uh, also all seemed like fiction for a while. Right. What do you know about Gina Haspel, and how do you think she was treated, especially in that exchange? Well, what I know about her, uh, guys from my background, uh, we couldn't hold a candle to that. Um, she's done a lot of covert things that, you know, we look up to, a lot of covert drops. Uh, her background speaks uh, things of what, you know, legends are made of. It almost comes like, or it almost sounds like it's from a fiction book. Her background is stellar performance. Uh, a lot of guys from my background, special operations, kind of envy that. And we look up to people like sure. that. Sure. Your background is special operations. Your parents were both in the intel community. That's right. Both intel. I was born overseas in Germany, so we have a little bit of uh, you know, say so or know how, how things go on the uh, intel side. Well, you've taken out the bad guys. In three months, you killed 33 individuals. You're a sniper. You're the first African American to deploy in the global war on terrorism as a sniper in your battalion. How did you get into this? I uh, started when I was in the sixth grade. I kind of had this dream watching a lot of uh, Chuck Norris shows and stuff like that with my parents. <laughs> and uh, I always wanted to ride the motorcycles with the rockets on it. And then after that, I wanted to uh, try out for the Navy SEALs, but I have a, a color issue. Uh, color issue. I'm colorblind. So uh, the Army kind of stood up for me. They took up for me and helped me. Uh, I'm not going to say cheated on my test, but <laughs> the uh, kind nurse kind of helped me out, and, you know, she got me through that. Did they have the motorcycle with the rockets? Oh, that's classified. I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make this stand. Uh, yeah. In particular, when she was actually talking about what she needed to do, we know it's not politically correct to say enhanced interrogation. I did what I had to do. But she, yet she's prideful for what she did. Mm -hmm. I actually think she should embrace from what happened because she stopped a lot of future attacks. Is that your belief? 100% my belief. Uh, like you said uh, earlier, 9-11, um, no one complained about how we got the job done back then. And, you know, watching individuals and, and innocent, you know, moms and dads jump from those towers, it's kind of, you know, hard to forget. So what we do to get the, uh, the job done is how we get it done. Have we forgotten? I think we have. I think it's become uh, somewhat bumper sticker deep. You know, uh, it only goes that far. So I think we need to kind of get back on track and, and let the guys, you know, do their job. Well, the president of the United States is taking an unconventional approach toward foreign affairs and foreign policy. But you look at what he's done in the last week. Mm -hmm. it seems yeah. to be working. Unconventional warfare, you know, and I think that uh, one of the sayings in my community, our special operations community, is we do bad things to bad people. And we have not deterred from that. We're really good at what we do. And how we get that done is, you know, pretty right. efficient. There's also yesterday, we should know, we had it in the news, there was capture of five higher-ups in ISIS yeah. in Iraq yesterday. A cap clean capture, we now have them. Yeah. Uh, what, do, what do you think about that? How does that benefit? Uh, I think it's a really, really good deal. It was, one, you know, one of our missions uh, overseas in special operations, Iraq and Afghanistan, doing six deployments there. Uh, our job was to capture high-value targets and get those guys turned over to start giving up intel or any type of information they have. You have complete confidence in our military. We're not going soft in that area, right? No, no. I still talk to a lot of the guys in, and they have not changed. Talk about, yeah, talk about this, Reaper Ghost Target. What, is, what about your background played into this novel? A lot of my background, uh, you know, I kind of wanted to go into the fiction side. It's kind of where I grew up at. Uh, my first book that I ever, you know, completed was uh, based off of a, go a Goosebumps novel uh, mm -hmm. back in elementary school. My mom still has it. Uh, printed out on the little, you know, with the serrated ed uh, edges of paper and stuff like that. So it was my first book that I ever wrote. And I think that, you know, going back to that childhood dream state, uh, I think we kind of forgotten that the older we get, being able to dream and live this, little, not so much of a fantasy role, but being able to uh, explore the mind. A little Goosebumps, bit. Chuck Norris. Yeah, yeah. The with, Hulk. With General oh, yeah. Tata. Exactly. Yeah, and, yeah. and, of course, you wrote it with General Tata, who's also oh, yeah. successful. So I've talked to him Big about time. it. But real quick, 
Michael Strahan also grew up in a military family in Germany. What do you learn? What is different about your background that allows you to accomplish so much? Uh, the appreciation for the military. Um, both my parents, you know, serving in the military, uh, watched, uh, you know, their career play out in front of me, and it kind of, you know, put that or instilled that into me. Uh, me and my siblings it was, uh, you know, appreciation for America, the United States, and our military. You and said standing behind that. I, we were talking a little bit about what you're doing now. You're actually filming something right now. I am. I'm filming something right now. Uh, it's also classified, but hopefully <laughs> soon, it, you know, we'll get a little bit of uh, information on that. But it's. Uh, Pretty, pretty cool show. Well, everyone needs to it's go classified. out and buy his book. His book came out oh, at the beginning. Like the motorcycle. <laughs> his book came out at the beginning of April, and it's successful. And everyone needs to read this and buy it. We need to support you because you've done so much for this country. You're I a hero, it. and we thank you. Thank you, guys. Nick, right. thank you very much. Thank Nicholas you. Irvin. It's called Reaper Ghost Target.